All right, in this video, what I'm going to show you is how to make this 3D vector triangle. Uh, to start with, basically, we're going to uh, need to start with a new document. So uh, go ahead and open up Inkscape and open up a new Inkscape document. And then once you're in, the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to get rid of the page border so that it's not really in our it's just kind of in our way right now. So we're going to go ahead into document properties under file, click on that. And then when this opens up, uh, we're going to go ahead and uncheck shape, show page border and then you can close that out. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our create a star and polygon tool. And we want one that is a, a regular polygon. That's this one here. And then we want to make sure that we have three corners selected over here. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and, and drag out a triangle. And we want this triangle to be pointing directly up. So we're going to go ahead and hold control on our keyboard. And we're going to snap it so that it's showing straight up like that. Right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and click, take the select arrow. Well, um, now, before you get started on this, um, the one thing you want to make sure you do is you want to have this triangle at about 50% opacity. So to do that, you're going to go ahead up here to Object, click on Fill and Stroke. That will open up our Fill and Stroke menu over here. And you can see mine is already at around 50%, but yours might be when you pull that triangle out at 100%. You want to take that opacity down to about 50% or so. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and right click on this triangle and we're going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and I'm going to drag this triangle over uh, to about right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it again. What I want to do is I want to take this corner and I want to place it right there. Now over here, I have some buttons that are selected over here. You may or may not have some of these selected. Um, when we did the cube, uh, we had this one selected. You want to make sure that your snap nodes, paths, and handles is turned on. If that's turned off, you won't be able to select any of these. So go ahead and make sure that's turned on. Uh, you also want to make snap to cuss nodes on. And then also you want this one here. It's a snap to path intersections. So we're going to have those two selected. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, take that triangle. And we want to be able to snap it right to that intersection right there. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and take our Bezier pen. I'm going to click on this corner here, and I'm going to basically draw a shape all the way around, connecting each one of these points all the way around, and then reconnecting it to where you started. Okay, so then you have that shape there. So then what you can do is you can go ahead and take, click on your select arrow again. Um, you want to click on each one of these triangles. Pull them out and we can go ahead and delete them. Like so. Then we want to go ahead and click on that other shape that we created with the triangles. I'm going to go ahead and turn that red. And um, I want to get rid of the black line that outlined it. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and hold shift on our keyboard and click this X right here. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and turn our opacity back down to about 50% again. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click on this shape and I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click on it one more time and I'm going to duplicate it again. And this time I'm going to make that green. And what I want to do is I want to slide this piece over so that it snaps over to that section right there. And actually what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this red shape, I think, and I'm going to make that red shape blue. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and hold shift. I'm going to click on this green shape over here. And we're going to go path difference. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, I need to get rid of this little corner piece right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Bezier pen. I'm going to go down here and click on this corner right here and then connect this corner right there. And then I'm going to draw a shape around that piece and reconnect over here. 
And I'm going to take my select tool, hold shift, I'm going to click on this blue shape right there. And I'm going to go path, difference. Then I'm going to go ahead and right click on this shape and I'm going to duplicate it. Then I want to go ahead and click it a second time here and get these rotation handles. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard. And as I do so, I'm going to rotate this around so that it's perpendicular there, or I should say flat. And then we're going to go ahead and connect this corner with this corner right here. So I'm going to drag that down and it should snap right there. Then I'm going to go ahead and hold shift, click on this blue one up here. So I have both blue sele uh, pieces selected. And I'm going to go ahead and hit path, union. Then I'm going to right click on this shape and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. And I'm going to turn that one green. And with these rotation handles still open around, um, if you don't have them there, you can go ahead and click on it a second time. You'll get the rotation handles. Hold control on your keyboard, and we're going to rotate this so that the corner, top corner there is pointing straight up. And we're going to connect that piece with that corner right there. You want to make sure you snap it right there. Okay. All right, so then we can go ahead and click on this uh, pink shape here, and we don't need that anymore, so we're going to go ahead and delete that. All right, so now, the, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this green shape. I'm going to hold shift, click on this blue shape. We're going to right-click and duplicate. Then we're going to go to path, intersection. And then we're going to turn that red. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Um, I'm going to right-click on this red shape. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Then I'm going to go to hold shift, click on this green shape, and we're going to go to path, difference, path, break apart. All right, so then you can go ahead and click off the graphic, and we're going to go ahead and click on just this green corner piece right here and pull that out. And we'll go ahead and click delete on your keyboard and just get rid of that. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and click on this red shape again. We're going to right click on it and duplicate it. I'm going to hold shift, click on the blue shape. We're going to go to path, difference, and then path, break apart. All right, so then I'm going to go ahead and click off. I'm going to click on this red shape one more time and I'm going to go to path, break apart. All right, so then I'm going to go ahead and click off the graphic. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this green piece. I'm going to hold shift and click on this red piece. And I'm going to hold shift and click, uh, while I'm still holding shift, click on this green piece. So I have all three of those selected. We're going to go to path, union. Then we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to do the click on this blue shape. I'm going to hold shift, click on this red shape. And then hold shift and click on this blue shape. So I have all three of those selected. Go to path, union. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on this green shape. And I'm going to right click and duplicate it. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it red. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on it a second time there and skip those rotation handles. I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and I want to rotate this uh, so that this bottom line is straight across like so. We're going to slide that in and we're going to match this corner piece up here with that intersection. Right, so then we're going to go ahead and uh, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on this red shape. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. Then I'm going to hold shift and click on this blue shape. And then we're going to go to path difference. All right. And as you can see, we're pretty much done with the shape. We have it completely built. Now we just need to color it uh, to make it really pop. So what we'll do uh, is I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing like this. So. And then we'll go ahead and turn my opacity back up to 100. And I'm going to choose some colors. You can use the color bar down here on the bottom and choose a color family that you want to use. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do like a purple one this time. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this one in this particular shape. And I'm going to make that uh, my light color. 
So I'm gonna make that kind of that light purple there. Um, this one here, the red one, I'm going to make that kind of the mid-tones. There we go. And then this one, I'm going to make this one of the darker tones. Okay, so I have those three, basically those colors selected. Just a little bit darker, maybe. Now, in order to make them uh, really pop a little bit more, what you can do is you can go ahead and um, we're going to use the gradient tool. All right, so this, here's the gradient tool, the, the linear gradient. We're going to go ahead and click on that. Um, and actually, I'm not going to do it yet. I want to make sure that I pick on the right one. Uh, so then I'm going to go ahead and click on this light color one first, and then I'm going to go click on this uh, the gradient tool here, and then we're going to click on the edit gradient button, this one right here, and you should get these two little handles. I'm going to go ahead and click on this right handle, and I want to turn the opacity up on that one to 100%. So then you have the RGB A uh, there, and you want to turn the A all the way up to 100. And then uh, we're going to make that uh, right hand side a little bit lighter. And I'm going to make this uh, left hand side a little bit darker. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my select arrow again. I'm going to click on this bottom one, the mid tone ones. Again, clicking the gradient fill. I'm going to click on edit gradients. Again, I'm going to right click on that, or click on that, I should say, uh, left click on that uh, right button. Again, turn up my opacity to 100%. And we're going to make that button a little bit lighter. I don't want to get to the blue, but uh, we do want to make it a little bit lighter. You can probably adjust it so that it's more towards the light color. Okay, so that's good. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and click on the arrow can again, and we're going to go ahead and click on this final dark shade. We're going to go ahead back to the gradient fill, click on uh, edit gradients. Again, click on that right button, turn the opacity up to 100%. And then we're going to also, we're going to make that one again uh, lighter. Uh, now, if I make this, move this one down, it's going to, kind of get to that green or bluish area. I don't really want that. I want it to make sure that it uh, stays lighter, or I should say to the purple end. So we might have to play around with some of these other colors just to try to get them to where you want to be. Make that one a little bit lighter. There we go. Try to get it to that pink color there, whoops. There we go. All right, so then that's basically it. Once you get get the gradients to where you like them, um, that's basically all you have to do, and then you're done.